start. Uh... Great. Okay. So welcome. And today we are going to speak about two topics like every afternoon. And for those who are new to this series of webinars, we are happy to have you here this series of webinars has the objective to diffuse all the innovation in the, in the area of education because this is the um, the core area in which jump um, training academy is active dedicating training courses structured training courses to teachers and educators um, from all around Europe. First of all, in presence in the Marvelous headquarters in Calabria, in the south of Italy, the city of Soverato, and also with other kind of activities and initiatives that can also be structured online for specific, for specific um, requirements that can be is um, communicated to Jump Academy. And of course, also other kind of collaborations like in Erasmus. And it's exactly Erasmus Plus project, the big opportunity that can give to all schools around Europe the um, possibility to access to these uh, training courses in presence for free. The, um, the new call has been launched and in one month there will be the next deadline for Key Action 1 um, in, in Erasmus and Key Action 1 projects are those projects that can finance the possibility to access to these uh, training courses. Today we are going to speak about two of the um, topics that are part of all the portfolio of Jump Training Academy. So we are going to start from the topic of coaching and mentoring, innovative techniques for teachers, mentors, and educators to fight school dropout and motivate all. And we have with us the um, very uh, experienced trainer, Catherine Perry, uh, she is from Australia. You're going to discover it immediately. So welcome, Catherine. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Simona. And thank you for Alessia. all of you participating. Alessia, sorry. Alessia, sorry. Simona, oh my God. Um, good afternoon to everybody. And as um, Alessia said, I come from Australia, but I have been part of the JUMP team for over six years now. So... Um, I'm very familiar with Soverato, very familiar with uh, many of the teachers that are online today too. I see some names that are, uh, come to my mind. And I, I don't only do coaching and mentoring, but I also do um, other courses, other sessions, and I also do jump, um, emotional intelligence, emotional competences, which is strictly related to coaching and mentoring, and also stress management, both for teachers and for students. I also um, do STEAM and STEM uh, and also now STREAM, which has the reading inside as well. I, I do coding and also <clears throat> CLIL, which is very popular at the moment. So I'm more or less into all the sessions. Uh, so come along and join one of the sessions and you'll see what they're all about. But today I'm going to concentrate on coaching and mentoring because, um, as we know, coaching and mentoring play a crucial role uh, in schools, uh, they contribute significantly to the overall development uh, of the success of both students and educators, not just students and not just educators, but for both, uh, in the way that they um, uh, improve professional development. Um, they have retention and job satisfaction if they are mentored, if the students are mentored or coached. Uh, um, it's a skill enchantment. Uh, because coaching and mentoring are different. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but coaching and mentoring are two different things. Um, I've had past participants that have said to me, we are confused. They say, is a coach's role the same as a mentor's role? And I say, there is a slight difference. <coughs> Excuse me. And the difference is that a coach concentrates on your skills that you already possess. So they try and improve. Let's say, for example, I want to be a singer. Well, they concentrate on my singing. They concentrate on my voice, on how to improve my singing. So they would give me advice and say, for example, you'd have to take some singing lessons. You have to have a singing coach, um, wear a scarf in the evening because 
it, you know, your throat your throat is very delicate. Your um, your voice. Too. So it, they enhance the skills that we already possess, or they underline the skills that we already possess, and they give you advice on how to improve those skills in order to reach your objectives. Uh, Mentoring, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Mentoring concentrates more on your personal development, personal growth. So more on your personality, um, more on, uh, uh, let's say, if you're doing badly at school, maybe, you know, help along um, a study method which might help you. Um, if you're having problems at home um, with a boyfriend, um, these kind of things. Um, it's more for self-assurance, uh, self-confidence, to build self-confidence in students or teachers because, as we know, Coaching and mentoring um, is not just for students. Uh, there are different types of coaching and mentoring, of course, uh, different types of relationships, and they could be not only one-to-one, -one, but they can also be group mentoring where um, one person mentors a group of four people, four students or four colleagues, uh, could even be colleagues. There's peer mentoring. Peer mentoring could be two students mentoring each other <coughs> on familiar problems uh, or two teachers mentoring each other and this could be um, classically an older teacher a senior teacher with a young teacher that's just started teaching so it's important to be mentored even for you teachers to mentor each other because when a young teacher comes along they're usually lost they don't know how to um, fit in they don't know how to behave with the students with the other colleagues so it's very important that a senior teacher one has been there a bit longer can mentor this teacher and teach her how to um, become more self-confident, how to keep her class uh, interested and how to react in different situations. So, and also there's also um, <clears throat> uh, online mentoring. In this case, okay. online mentoring or e-mentoring okay. or e-mentoring as well okay. is important um, when, for example, the student can't access the meeting point uh, um, where the mentor is uh, um, or if there's a lockdown or if there's a problem, there's bad weather, they can't get out or they don't drive. So e-mentoring is also very popular. Um, what, what I was going to stress was <clears throat> the role of a mentor. The role of a mentor is very particular because we tend to think that a mentor is a counsellor or a psychologist. Uh, very wrong because we are not psychologists, we're not um, <clears throat> advisors, we are simply simply people that listen. <clears throat> Someone has their microphone on. <clears throat> Someone's forgotten their microphone. Um, mentors um, listen. And this is where I stress a lot when I do my sessions. I say you have to be an active listener. What is an active listener? An active listener is a person that listens to understand, to understand what the other person is trying to say, what the other person is transmitting to us, not to interrupt and not to judge because a mentor is a person who is not a teacher in that moment, it's not a parent in that moment, and not a psychologist. So the most important things to remember when we are mentoring students or colleagues um, is to actively listen, to understand, so we can help them. We don't give advice because the actual mentee has to come up with their own solutions. We can brainstorm some ideas for them and they come up with their own ideas uh, or they come up with their own solutions, let's say. We show kindness. We show our, um, let's say, our empathy towards the mentee. We show compassion without judging and without giving advice. And I would also add to this without unnecessary reassurance because this could be very dangerous. Now, if a mentee comes to me, and this has happened in the past, and they say to me, look, look my mum is in hospital, I'm very worried, you know, and they go on and on, I'm very stressed, and I say, don't worry, everything will be okay. Well, it's happened that the mother has died, and the mentee will never trust you again. And a relationship with a mentee, between a mentee and a mentor is based on trust. So the first thing we need to build is trust, and if we break that trust, we're finished. Our relationship finishes. Another thing I'd like to add before we start a mentoring relationship with a mentee <clears throat> is to, this is some advice I give some teachers, to organize a meeting where we have a match, where we can match mentees and mentors. So whoever may be interested in becoming a mentee and whoever may be interested in becoming a mentor to mentor these mentees, we can have a little 
like a meeting and we have a cup of coffee, you know, something to drink and get familiar with the mentees. What I do is I distribute um, a questionnaire where we write mentee and mentor and we write our likes, our dislikes, our hobbies, our beliefs, our religion. Because sometimes when we have different beliefs or different um, kind of ways of thinking than our mentee, it could clash in our relationship. Um, it could come between us. It's not supposed to because we are not supposed to push our beliefs onto our mentees. But sometimes it's inevitable. It's inevitable. So it's important that the matching process at the beginning is, is confirmed. And, well, we have to have a matching process. It's an idea that I have I've given my teachers. I don't know if you agree with me, but if any of you have done it, but I think it's a very good thing. This is a good start. Um, it's not a guarantee that the mentoring relationship will uh, uh, work or will come to an end. It might come to an end after a month. Um, but usually a mentoring relationship is a long-term relationship. It's a long process because we have to start with the trust. We have to build trust. Sometimes we might have a mentee that is reluctant to speak, so they may sit there for an hour and not say anything. We have to have patience. We have to not push, never push the mentee to speak and say, come on, or lose patience. <clears throat> so it takes a little bit longer. Um, with the coaching relationship, on the other hand, it's a short, short term because all we need to do is just reach the mentee's goal, the goal the mentee has to reach their goal, and we're done. Okay, um, mentoring is a little bit different. <clears throat> Another thing that I um, suggest in a mentoring relationship is to start off when we are matched and when we have our first meeting to create a, um, a GROW model. And I've always stressed on this. The GROW model is, um, I think you all know what GROW stands for, um, goal, reality, what's my reality now? So this is my goal, where am I now? Um, <clears throat> Uh, where are we going? What am I going? To, what steps am I going to take? And the will. When am I going to start these steps? Um, so a grow model is very simple. Ask uh, the mentee uh, what they'd like to reach, their objective, their goal. Then say, where are you now? Um, and they say, come here. And what kind of things could you do to change this situation? And then when are you going to do these things? So have them work it all out and have like um, a goal always has a time limit. It's always time bound. So make them think about what a goal is, time bound, rea realistic, um, and all those things. <clears throat> um, other things that I'd like to just stress on is mentoring is fundamental in avoiding school dropout. Because if we have a student that has lots of problems with school or with a teacher, with their um, peers, if we can effectively mentor that student, and make them more self-confident. Of course, it'll be easier for them to fit into the school program and become more resilient. And becoming more resilient, it, um, sometimes they don't think of dropping out of school, but if they are weak and they lose, lose self-confidence, there is no one there to listen to them, no one to support them. Of course, they're going to think of, who needs school? I'm leaving. So that's a very common thing today that um, students don't feel supported, don't feel... Um, uh, let's say, trusted, don't feel listened to. Um, they don't feel safe also. And this sense of belonging, that's what's important. And if a mentor is able to give a student, or a mentee, sorry, that sense of belonging, the need for safety, this meaning to their existence, it all changes. So mentoring does develop resilience in young students, in young people. It reduces risky behavior too because if we are mentored, obviously the risky behavior is far away from our eyes. We tend to think differently. We think there are other solutions to suicide or to other things. Now, obviously, we are not psychologists. So I always stress the fact that if a mentee comes to me and says, I want to suicide or I'm being bullied at home or I'm being maltreated at home, obviously this is not our role. You pass this on to a psychologist or an advisor um, because it's a serious situation and a mentor does not do this. They're not skilled or trained to do this. So when it's something very serious, we talk to the mentee together and we decide if they want to go and speak to someone more professional who can help them in this way. Um, Obviously, also mentoring reduces the absentee rate 
because students, when they have a big problem and they, it's bigger than them and they're just overwhelmed and don't have anybody to speak to, don't have anyone to listen, that listens to them, they become absent. So they start not coming to school or so. And also mentoring improves communication skills and social skills because they are communicating with the mentor and they are becoming more familiar and they're also becoming familiar with their actual problem. They're seeing their problem from a different point of view. I don't know if you want to add anything to this, if you want to ask me any questions, but I think I've spoken a lot. My 20 minutes are over, I think. But um, I invite you to come along to one of my sessions because I also, in my, during my sessions, I have case studies which I give my um, attendees and they also um, work on case studies, real case studies, where I can give some feedback and they can help each other. And they also give each other feedback, which is really interesting. So thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for the thank you. broad presentation covering many, many topics, the methodology and the importance of the interaction that is fundamental during all of our training courses and in particular courses that are so centered on uh, communication, on developing effective communication skills and on uh, practicing with role playing um, what is in um, in real life <laughs> this role of mentor how can we mentoring and coaching how can we bring it to our context in in every day and in a structured program for mentoring or for uh, coaching thank you so much and we have some participants who attended previous uh, uh, courses with Catherine, so we really e we're really eager to listen to their uh, stories and what happened after attending the training course. Uh, what is still alive with you? What was um, more important for you once you went back home and to your school? Um, so Erica maybe can introduce us, yes, our yes, Jump yes. Ambassadors. We, we I, call Jump Ambassadors participants who attended the training courses and, and that we are still in contact with them because this is what, this is one of our objectives, to remain in contact, to have feedback, to continue the exchange even after the training in presence. Exactly. Let's say that the two women for, uh, from today, of today, uh, I said Viruta and Ada, they are really jumpers. More than jump ambassadors, they are jumpers because they jumped into these webinars and they attended the courses uh, in very different periods. I mean, Viruta came a long time ago and Ada came a few months ago. So uh, what is important to stress is that, uh, for example, Catherine Perry and you, Alessia, are two trainers and you two cover the topic of coaching and mentoring. Coaching and mentoring has been the first training we proposed in 2014-15 and is still one of the most requested uh, also because uh, this kind of figures um, are professionals but in some countries they are still not into maybe the, the, the labor market so um, you know, their professional career is not very well defined. So there is a, a kind of confusion still, still. And what is very important is that uh, we as a trainer, group of trainers, we, 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 we cover different topics and we, we cross topics also because the education is not something standardized and something that we conceived as a closed box. Uh, we, we, we cross different uh, subjects. As uh, Catherine said, emotional competencies now is very required and um, other topics related more to didactic. So maybe Biruta, uh, you came, uh, I guess, five years ago. You were one of the first once and uh, Ada recently. We also upgraded and innovated, innovated innovative our programs uh, you can be maybe the witness of uh, what we do Biruta are you there no. yeah you? I'm here I'm here and it was so nice to listen Katarina again like I was there 
<laughs> next to that table and uh, it for sure was uh, my favorite uh, teacher <laughs> in in that course it was very very nice probably not so new but even though uh, sometimes new information and Katarina was the first person from whom I got to know this difference between coach and mentor because really I was like ordinary people who are asking is there any difference and Katarina said yes and explained it so nice and <clears throat> what happened in my life was um, what I got from this course <clears throat> probably I just hope I became a better teacher I hope so, because um, teachers like their students normally are growing every day and we're learning something new. And um, I also a career counselor, but um, uh, exactly this year, I, um, I, jumped. <laughs> I jumped in a new challenge and I'm working with deaf students. And it's something very, very new in my life. Of course, I knew all the time that some people, because of different reasons, are deaf. But when I have to work with the students, so this uh, situation is let's say very hard for me and I have to to find ways how okay I speak sign language a little bit now but not very good but firstly before any language before English language before sign language always comes something from our hearts and what I felt in that course from Katarina that the main things are living in our hearts and that was the sentence that when you are breaking trust your relationship is finished and never in the best way you will tell some theories never you will be hurt if you are breaking trust if you are not speaking from your heart so thank you once again i i never supposed to get so fantastic opportunity to see you all again thank you Thank you so much. Probably oh. some questions I can answer as well, but it, it's my it's my main sentence. Thank I you, learned Biruta. once again to use my heart. Thank you, Biruta. It's very important to use our empathy with our students. Empathy is at the base. If we lack empathy and if we lack that trust that students have in us, if we break that trust, like there's a saying in English that it takes years to build trust and seconds to break it. And that's, I've said it all. Yeah. I've said it all. It's, it's really like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite explicit, Catherine, <laughs> what you said. And, and this is what we really need to be aware of in general, in this role of coach and mentor, and also in our role of educator and trainer. Building trust in the classroom is one of the first needed step, because we know that today education is absolutely not just transferring knowledge or uh, anything else. It's absolutely based on building an effective relationship and making a connection from my heart to the student heart. Otherwise, we have no chance to motivate uh, the students if, if they don't feel that they are relevant for us, that we really take care of them as a person, first of all, and then as a, as a student. 
And this is uh, not only um, an intention, this is scientifically proven nowadays that uh, what is needed today more than ever is this, um, is this connection. Thank you, thank you so much for, um, for being I present just, today, for sharing your If I experience. have one second more, I just have to add about this very brilliant sentence from another teacher which I met in um, USA. I had an opportunity to learn also there. Students don't care if they know that you are not caring. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, students don't care about what you can say or do if first they don't perceive that you care about them. Exactly. If I may add, um, also body language is very important here because the way we <clears throat> speak is non is verbal verbal communication, but the non-verbal communication is not to be um, undermined because it is it's as important as the verbal communication, and that also um, makes a difference. So, the way we stand, the way we look at people in their eyes, the way we move, body language is very important, very important. The words we use, before we use words, and this is when I do case studies in my courses, um, the words that I tell the teachers to use, the words that are wrong and the words that are right to use. And um, th that's important to make a big difference. So nice. One word can make a big difference. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> If I say something, uh, also stress the, um, that during our training, uh, of course, these are all very positive aspects, idyllic. I mean, ideally, everything should be like this, but we also, you have to establish very clear barriers or boundaries uh, in the relationship. Because nowadays with the social media, uh, we don't have secrets in, in practice and they are very, very dangerous. Um, so in this kind of uh, work, which is based on human relationship, uh, this aspect nowadays is uh, crucial, is fundamental. Also to establish a, a kind of distance uh, between our life of educators and trainer and uh, the students. Yeah front of you and their families, of course. This is something I also stress, Eric, and I may add that I also say that in the um, contract, the initial contract, I make when it's a formal mentoring relationship, formal, because there is informal mentoring and formal mentoring. Um, in a formal relationship, I also get the, the mentee and the mentor to sign a contract where they commit to this relationship and where privacy is also um, very very, um, let's say, important privacy and the barriers, like Erica was saying. So we set the rules. What time is my limit when you can call me? Okay. And when can't you call me? When can you call me? These are very important things because they can really um, harm a relationship. So they're all important points. I just wanted to add to that. Thank you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Catherine. And Erika, we can go to the next topic. Uh, maybe let's uh, let's leave the floor to Ada. Oh, okay, perfect. She was very busy and she's there. Thank you, Ada. Um, and hello, hello everyone. You. Can you hear me? So yes. it's so nice to see people from Jump, to see some familiar Hi, names. And I am extremely happy to see Alessia, our teacher. Uh, the four people from our school attended the course and three of us work in management positions and coaching and mentoring uh, is also very important when it comes to school management, to relationships between um, management, leadership and teachers, which naturally then goes to students. So we really enjoyed the course and the content very much because it was, um, actually it was important. We were looking for it and we came across very professional courses and very professional teachers. That's why we are really happy. 
and all the cost material we were provided was really useful. Uh, we turned it into some workshops in our school. We practiced with teachers and teachers probably will practice with students because it's quite new. Mm, but in general, it was really very useful and it encouraged us to ask more questions, first of all, to listen and to ask more questions because sometimes uh, we speak too much. And uh, listening is a very important skill nowadays. We, we speak too much, we're too noisy in our environments. And when you start listening and asking questions, so a lot of problems might be solved by people themselves. So as if I learned well, so coaching is about it, about asking questions. In general, all the course, if, if there are some some people, some new people who would like to participate, who would like to join uh, the course. So I would strongly recommend because the, the course itself was very well structured and well balanced. Practical activities and theoretical activities, working in small group, working together with other people from other groups. So we got some more connections uh, with the teachers from other schools from other countries uh, we also met some people from our country it was it was really fun because we didn't know each other before we didn't know each other's schools and we met somewhere in calabria in Sadarata. and of course italy italy is a wonderful place and cultural activities uh, together with uh, all the tuition with the uh, teaching was really of high quality. So this is my impression and I, I keep going uh, this way and I jumped into another course, into the course of management at university. It's my second um, master degree and that's why I have to disconnect and connect to uh, my other lecture. But thank you very much for inviting me and sorry I was spontaneous, not prepared at all. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Ada. <laughs> this is so interesting. Thank you. Because you, you didn't need to prepare anything. This is just... A, a, this yes, is this is just what I feel I said. Mm -hmm. And, and we, be, we still talk about the course. We still talk about the materials. Actually, it's a shame that we don't have enough time to read everything and to maybe to turn it into our context, to adapt to our context. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we are trying. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, uh, the active involvement of participant is uh, absolutely important during um, uh, these uh, experiences. And uh, what, you, um, with you, what you have just said confirm that you were absolutely actively participating. And this is the... The added value of non-formal education, which is the methodology that we use, and at the same time, it's part of being really interested to the learning outcome. So in uh, your group, uh, it was so um, evident that you were present and uh, eager to, um, to learn and to practice. So thank you so much again for your uh, active presence for your contribution and it, this really makes us happy to to know how everything evolved once you went back thank you yes. thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you alessia thank 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 you all of you jump team and keep us updated because we, we always want to know uh new new updates new steps and new, ideas. New, new ideas new ideas yes, yes. new can... ideas Yes. Meet again and cooperate. Okay. It would be nice to come again. <laughs> yeah. For us, it would be great to go back to Konas. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. You are welcome. You are welcome. If you come to Konas, please yeah. visit us. Absolutely. I was with with uh, Alicia a year ago, so we will cross each other in the air. And you but... know, now we have two medals in common. We have our bronze medal in ice skating and you have your golden medal. Ah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're too. And also we would like to go to Latvia one day to visit Biruta, who is living in the nature. She always posts on Facebook uh, beautiful places. And I, I was thinking, is it real or 
it's like uh, you know an image taken from the web and she told me no no this is real this is this morning at 6 a.m in the morning with the snow and everything so beautiful in latvia you, so you're... i hear and remember your words and waiting for you <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, I promise. But then, uh, you know, life uh, is keeping me here in this moment. You know, I told so you. So sorry. Bye bye. I have bye to. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, Thank you. Thank you. Dear bye as well. Everyone. Dear everyone. Now um, we, we go to another topic. Um, I will substitute another trainer who is now busy in a, in a training outdoor. And we are going to talk about uh, uh, cultural heritage. One aspect of um, our team uh, is that we also write and develop European projects. And um, of course, uh, we always find new synergies. And sometimes during our uh, training, we find some, uh, you know, some teachers or school director, or someone who is a leader or someone who has a beautiful idea. We share the needs, uh, the common needs and some new projects born which are not key action one project so mobility for the staff but also exchange of practices and project where we develop some tools so we create a, a product called intellectual output or uh, project results nowadays because erasmus changed the the different terms in this case during a period of two years, we develop a project titled Let's Teach Europe based on cultural heritage. During this project, we experienced uh, with different people from the UK, from Poland, from Spain, how is now, how it can be to share our cultural heritage. Cultural heritage is one of those topics which belong to everyone and everyone is involved. There is not just the European Union or the European flags, but we go beyond, we connect with all the other countries and under the Erasmus, you know, not just the EU countries can be involved, but also countries which are near and maybe are candidate. I see connected also our friends from Serbia who are always following us. They were here in April last year. For example, Serbia is a country that we don't know very well and we would like maybe to go there and to discover. But when they came, we found that we are very similar we are not so different. It's not just the historical uh, connection, the political connection for, but it's it's something much more that we can experience just meeting each other and trying to find the connection um, through discovering different elements, the, the cultural heritage, which we can touch. So the tangible cultural heritage and the intangible cultural heritage. So I want to share my screen and show our website. Do you see my screen? Okay. So this is our website, you know very well, associazionejump.it. What we propose is a training that can be connected with main topics like fostering European citizenship, uh, fighting uh, bad phenomenon like uh, bad phenomena like uh, racism, like uh, hate, like uh, all what is happening in the world. So uh, peace education, bringing peace, uh, developing pre peace education. So cultural heritage is a bridge. It's something that connects uh, everyone uh, despite the geographical borders. In this training, we of course explore the theoretical background behind. So what the 
uh, European institution and the word institutions um, defined as cultural heritage. At the base, there is, of course, UNESCO, which is worldwide, and everyone knows something that is UNESCO heritage, but there is a clear definition between tangible and tangible, natural, and, and, and nature, it means the nature we have uh, around. What we do are activities. So the people around the same around the same table can share what is positive to be connected. And also we teach through teachers, students to be better global citizens. Because sometimes when you are in your local village, you couldn't travel in your life, you couldn't see, and you are a young, still young person, you don't know what there is uh, in front of you. We are all people who travel nowadays with Erasmus, with many other opportunities, but sometimes students need the teachers open their eyes to the beauty we have. When the teachers come to Soverato, we develop a, pro a, a program that integrate the theoretical part, then we develop a lot game-based learning. So we create activities which are animating and dynamic, uh, animated and dynamic, and they they share, they work together, mainly outdoors. Indoors, we do some activities when we need to project um, videos or to, to share. And the people who um, participate, they are sometimes from the same country. Sometimes we put together people from different countries. That is the most enriching part. Um, in a practical way, I want to share also, if you see, wait a second, because Zoom, do you see this website? Do you see the website Let's Teach uh, Europe? I'm yes. Not... Okay, cool, very well, thank you. This is the website we created thanks to an Erasmus Key Action 2 project titled Let's Teach Europe, European Heritage as a Pedagogical Integration Tool in Adult Education. So we transferred what we learned thanks to our partners, because if you are alone, you don't go anywhere. But thanks to the cooperation with other partners from Spain, from Poland, and from the UK, before the UK uh, couldn't, uh, be, uh, before the Brexit, let's say, it was the last project we could develop with uh, a partner from the UK. Uh, we explore our cultural heritage with this blog. So through this project, we learn how to write blog articles in different languages. Uh, we explore the food, the legends, the buildings, everything we have all around our beautiful Calabria, because we are based in Calabria, our partners from uh, different places uh, in Spain, uh, the Galicia region, uh, A Coruña city, in, Port, in Poland, they were from uh, Poznan, they were our leaders, and we discover that the, um, in Poland there is a region called the Great Poland and they told us about all of the legends they have and everything about Poland we, we didn't know because they were um, telling us a lot of things that normally are not uh, uh, famous. If you, if you check about Poland, you know about the capital, Warsaw, and maybe you know some words, you know the typical dish, uh, in all the, the, the country, but through our partners, we discover what happens and what they have in their region. And in the UK, we had partners from Southampton, and we learn more about uh, stereotypes and things we know about the UK, because everyone knows everything about the UK. But thanks to our partners, we were writing and reading uh, one to another, the uh, different articles, uh, when it was Christmas, when it was Easter, uh, everyone uh, could write articles on the blog. 
Furthermore, we created um, learning tools. So there are uh, manuals and um, research materials, how to share our cultural heritage and what to learn through cultural heritage. So in general, our uh, approach to training, the JUMP Academy is always based on, from one side, a strong knowledge about the EU and the European citizenship. Not just uh, as our colleague yesterday, Roberta said yesterday, the institutions, how do they work and the, let's say, political things, but also the very basic um, opportunities we, we have, like Erasmus. Erasmus, everyone knows, is a European program with some funds dedicated to education and training and mobility. On the other side, we also have a global approach. So we also train about global education and we always connect with the others uh, out of the EU and uh, nearest country and neighboring countries. And we are never scared about discovering people from different countries. And this is something that students have to learn uh, to go out from their uh, local area when they will travel, when they will be more than 18 and they will travel, they will choose what they will want in their life. They have to have an open eye to the global framework. Finally, the local in Calabria is for us very important. So as Biruta said, uh, during the training, um, we had some uh, activities which are just <laughs> Calabrian, just organized by JUMP, like the walking tour. We always do a walking tour, like on yesterday afternoon, our participants, our teachers, they walk freely in nature. They don't walk that much, but they reach the upside of the village. We are based on the beach, but we have a very beautiful village up on the hill. And the people do something healthy. They move their body uh, without uh, being in front of a screen, be, be, without being in a, in a classroom, in a closed space, but outdoor. So we always include something outdoor. In the morning on Monday morning, uh, we do the Mission Impossible Cave. Catalin, mute, please. Then uh, we... On Monday morning, we always do an activity which is considered part of the European Cultural Heritage Program because the participants get in contact with the local uh, people and they discover something related to the traditions, the culture here in uh, Soverato, um, the food, uh, something precious that uh, belongs just to this local context. And then the core part of the week is always uh, training and learning and sharing and teachers, they can be different every time. We try to match them in the best way. So not to be just, uh, uh, you know, to, to close them in, in one group. But as Ada said before, uh, we create small groups and we interact. And then we also organize some cultural excursions. So we go to visit different villages all around here along the coast uh, with their cultural heritage and traditions. And we see monuments and uh, elements of um, our beautiful region. Uh, the cultural heritage training is uh, published here on our website. It's something very dynamic, it's never the same for example, during some um, week, depending on the, the period, we also bring participants to visit a beautiful archaeological site, uh, which is the most important in the region, uh, where you can see the Greek and the Latin roots of uh, the region, because Calabria was named, was called the Magna Grecia, and so there is this beautiful, also full of olive trees, and it's uh, really a beautiful place. Also very good for the mind and the soul. So in this moment, I would close this uh, part. If someone has some uh, questions, 
And then I would like to show um, here the Erasmus uh, main uh, you know, platform where you can uh, submit your uh, Erasmus projects. Uh, in, in this moment in the audience, because I don't see the people, I just see my screen, um, there are some teachers from different countries or educators or people who are working in this field. Maybe you are facing the platform. If you have some Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, if someone has some questions or want to ask something about the next deadline of Erasmus, 20th of February, the so-called deadline for key action one, so accredited schools or organizations or non-accredited, uh, this is a form for non-accredited schools or other type of institutions, but in the field of uh, uh, school education. Is there someone who wants to make questions or ask us any kind of support, or you are interested in our trainings in general, and maybe we can speak also by email afterwards? Hello. Wait, who are you? Wait. I'm Kübra Girit from Turkey. Ah, hi. Yesterday you wrote that you are new. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I'm from Turkey. I had to go um I had to go yesterday. Uh sorry for going. <laughs> Don't uh, worry. So you are <laughs> Kubra. Kubra. Yes, uh -huh. Kubra. Okay. Um I'm very enthusiastic uh, for Erasmus. Uh, I'm so hard working, but I don't know where to start. Okay. So, can I answer to Kubra? Is there are other questions? So I can maybe answer to the same. Another question was asked in the chat by Tanzania. Ah, Tanzania. Someone from Tanzania asked your question. Taira, Taira Merali. Oh. Uh, Taira, from Tanzania, you mean Africa? <laughs> yes. At the moment, I don't think she can apply. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Taira uh, from Tanzania is really, is not a country uh, that is financed by the Erasmus. Uh, yes, Africa. I know Tanzania because I was there in uh, my wedding moon. <laughs> so I was in Zanzibar, so in the in the, in the island. Um, unfortunately, Tahera, I can't answer. I mean, uh, my answer is not uh, positive because you can't access from Africa uh, to this kind of funds. But I can answer to Kubra and uh, maybe make an overview to Kubra. Is there someone else? For example, Jasminka from Serbia. Is your school applying or already registered from Serbia? Because like uh, Turkey, you are in the countries uh, out of the EU. Uh, yes, from Serbia, there are schools which are part of Erasmus. But uh, my school... Uh, didn't uh, my school don't have uh, accreditation for okay Erasmus. okay do you uh, think your school will submit a project with Erasmus despite not being accredited uh, yes uh, we want to be part of some project and uh, as far as I know my principal try to find someone um, to be partners okay. because uh, we are not uh, 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 so good in um, making projects. We don't know how to do that. And this is very positive. Okay, don't be discouraged. Tell to your school director that this year you have a better, you have a, you have more chance. 
Okay, so I would like to answer to Kubra. Kubra, there are many other people connected that for sure are more experienced and they are into it. So I try to do my best um, as non-school because we are a training provider, but we, we can be partners. Um, you should go first to this to this platform and register your school. So firstly, you are here, you are in Erasmus Opportunities and you register your school. In this moment, the platform, as you see, it's something you see live with me, has some technical problems. I don't know if you are reading that uh, you don't see now the titles and you don't see, you can't, you don't know what you are clicking, but this is the kind of problem that you have to face because this platform, unfortunately, will never be so so good like we want and we have to face also some uh, technical problems. So you have to go to this platform, which is called the European uh, Solidarity Corps uh, and uh, Erasmus platform. On this platform, you register your organization and you simply write the name, the data, the name of the school director. You receive an email to an email account that you're going to write inside. Uh, it's always better to write the contact of your uh, school, not your personal email, because then all the project would be connected just with you. And you are one of the teachers, but you should have a formal uh, email account. So you receive an email with a OED number. Thanks to this number, when you are on this platform and you click on opportunities, you see this kind of page where you see the open calls. In this moment, I'm not sure if I, I try this one. You enter an application and this year, so this is not school education. Yes, K, K1, one to one school education. No, this is for accredited, sorry, because I couldn't see what I was clicking. That's the problem. As a school, we have accredi accreditation. Ah, so if you are accredited, you have to uh -huh. go, I think it's this one. It's this one, so. Rather, rather short-term project. No, I have to go again here. The problem is that, you know, when you open the platform, you, you don't see here the title. So I'm going blinded. Let's see this one. A credit, maybe this one here here we go because then all the application you open they remain in your draft so here you have to add your oed the oed if you are accredited you have first an oed and then an accreditation number and then you have to submit here if you don't have experience they are giving you more chances because in the previous years, they uh, many uh, organizations got the accreditation and at the beginning they gave all the funds to the first one uh, who, uh, which accredited. This year they are... Ktorá môžem, že nerozumiem, ale tam toľko informácií, že to nestíham vlastne dať na papier, aby som to mohla potom spísať a rozdať zástupky. Takže som z toho doznaný, že... Lenka... Ale kdeže nie? Toto si dám potom na zajtra do rania, jak... Who is speaking? Lenka? OK, wait. OK. Do you see? I don't know how to take away this one. Anyway, so you have to go here and design your Erasmus plan. In this moment, I'm inside here, but if I don't add the OED 
because JAMP is not accredited as a school, but we, we can be your hosting partner. If you don't have an OED and an accreditation number, if I click here, I can't fulfill, I can't write, so I don't see. So you have to establish with your school uh, staff the objectives in a long-term period, if you are accredited, that you want to reach through different type of activities. Different type of activities can be, here you see the different type of activities, group mobility of school pupils, short-term learning mobility of pupils. Group mobility is when the number is big. Short term, when it's very short, the time you stay abroad, like a week, four, five days. Long term is more than 14 days. So it's a long term. Then you can plan job shadowing, teaching or training assignment. If it's your first experience, first I would do courses and training. So you send people to be trained. Or you can also uh, click invited expert and you get a little fund to have an expert in your school to be like a speaker, a trainer for a, a short period of time because the budget they give for invited expert can be 1000 or something, not, not that much. And then you can also host teachers and educators uh, in a training. So you can also invite uh, other schools to send some teachers to your, uh, to your school. Uh, for the first experience, maybe I would suggest to focus on staff mobility, uh, not just because we offer good trainings, but you can also go in other, in other countries. So you can find the, the best training proposals um, and plan different mobilities according to the goals. So in the Erasmus plan, you set the objectives, the main goals of your project. For example, uh, empowering the internationalizations, the internationalization of my school, um, support students uh, with special needs, um, develop more digital competencies. These are very general objectives. Then, according to the activities, you go in the specific and so you choose maybe a training on that topic because it's in line with is connected with that goal in general the application for accredited school is very very easy i mean they facilitated the access to uh, direct funds while um, for non-accredited school, they have to write a little project. And this is another application. So we should go inside another application. Uh, now it's 5 p.m. So uh, if someone connected or uh, if you want to have maybe another moment in specific uh, for your school and you need uh, some support, uh, we always say that after these webinars, uh, all the people who don't need help can go out and uh, we can remain 10, 15 minutes. Or on Friday, uh, you can ask us, can we connect and I show you my application? Can we connect and you help me directly? Because everyone, you know, uh, is in different uh, stage of uh, this participation in Erasmus. So, Kubra, if you want, we can... Uh, create a meeting between you and I, and you show me uh, your application with your accreditation number. The OED and the accreditation numbers are uh, just yours. So we don't have yours. and We can't access to your application if you don't invite us. Uh, you can also share your application and we access, but normally um, we can't uh, do it from, from here, from Italy. Okay. So, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the the OED number uh, is um, in my principle, so I will take it and I will keep in touch with you as soon as possible. Exactly. And if you have an accreditation number, as soon as you you add the OED, it appears the accreditation number. Uh -huh. Okay. Just thank OED. you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Also, Yasminka, if you want that your school director or someone who is uh, working on the application needs some help, put in contact and we can we can help. They are they are really fostering the the cooperation with uh, Serbia. Uh, oh. Because Serbia is candidate, is one of the main um, countries entering in the EU, I guess, uh, in a couple of years, I don't know. Albania and Serbia uh, are really welcome in the, in the framework. Okay, we start work at Monday, so I will speak with my principal. Ah, it's true, it's Christmas time for you. Yes. Ah, yes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we celebrating <laughs> two weeks more than Merry me. Christmas. Thank it's, you. Yeah, in some countries <laughs> are having Christmas now. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. Okay. Okay, so we stop maybe now and we continue tomorrow. Tomorrow I won't be online, but there will be my colleagues and uh, other topics to be covered. Maybe Alessia, I want to give the appointment for tomorrow. Yes. So tomorrow we'll be online again at 4 p.m. And we are going to speak with uh, with the two other teachers. So Ashley, Renee Miller, uh, sorry, with um, Giuseppe Perrotti. Ashley will be online with us. And the trainer will be Giuseppe Perrotti with the topics uh, about uh, critical thinking for future generation thinkers. And we are going to discover what are these acronyms, STEM, STEAM, and STREAM education, new frontiers for transversal and innovative schools. So be and we, with will us. Have, we will have two ambassadors, one from Bulgaria and one from Spain. Great. So be with us tomorrow <clears throat> again. And there were some messages in the chat. I have already answered to them. Uh, please, for any special request that you have, send um, uh, an email directly to uh, Jump Training Academy. Erika will uh, be in charge of answering. So anything that you want to communicate, uh, especially to Erika about the core training courses and about um, Erasmus projects, if you want any um, support to design the project to include Jump as training provider, please send an email to associationejump at gmail.com as you can read in the chat. I, I posted two messages so you can read exactly, you can copy exactly the address and send an email because as you know, now, as soon as we close the um, this uh, webinar, otherwise we are going to lose if you want to write anything else. And uh, I just take advantage to answer uh, to Tahera writing to us from Tanzania, as of course she's from Africa, she cannot fund the, her participation through Erasmus, but she proposed to pay for the course and of course, all those teachers and people who are interested to participate and, and don't have a um, fund uh, from any, any organization, they can write to JAMP to discuss their participation and the possibility to pay by themselves. This is an option that it's possible to, um, to communicate to JAMP Association and and to find a way to do this. So Tahera, the answer, as I wrote in the chat, yes, you can. Please <clears throat> write your explicit request, your specific request by email. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank, uh -huh. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good evening.